If you follow this process with every animation, you'll make better work every time. This video is going to cover the process I use for creating an animation and how to communicate effectively with clients during each step to make sure the project runs smoothly. So we're going to start with research and inspiration. At this stage, you'll have a creative brief from a client, one idea for your animation, and you need to find references to get you inspired. To showcase this process, I'm going to use a music video I worked on a while back as a case study. I received this storyboard from the client, which already had a bunch of image references, and I asked them directly if they had any references or ideas for the overall aesthetic of the animation. She sent back some images of my work highlighting the grain and dark shadows as well as this ghost in a shell clip, which is kind of a once in a lifetime reference to receive from a client, really awesome. So now I had some visuals and I wanted to compile them. So I went to my favorite tool for this, Melanote, who is also the sponsor of this video. And they have a motion design template, which is the perfect starting point. So let's use that and edit it for our purposes. And this is what I ended up with. So let's jump into the mood board. And I had to recreate this from scratch because I deleted my original board because I was on the free version and I ran out of boards. But really, that's on me. I included images from the client storyboard and I collected a bunch of references to assist with some of the scenes. With this project, the animation was going to be simple and minimal. So I knew I had to put more effort into the illustration to compensate for that. That's also why I spent a lot of time in the pre-production stages really refining my storyboard, but more on that later. So after some discussion with the client, the vision for the music video was a futuristic, edgy, rundown, cyberpunk version of Cape Town. So I included that here to keep it in mind. Then there's the ghost in a shell reference that I pulled from the video she sent and a screen cap directly from the movie that I wanted to reference. I've also always loved the backgrounds from the Batman Beyond animated series and I thought this fit in really well with the futuristic dystopian aesthetic. And I wanted to quickly mention Melanote here. Melanote is a tool for organizing your creative projects and it's really great for collecting references. If you install their web browser extension, you can literally be on any web page and grab images for your boards really easily. So let's take a look at Batman Beyond backgrounds in Google search. If we select an image, right click and select save to Melanote, it allows us to save to whatever board we like. Then we can repeat this multiple times on multiple websites. And then we can come back to our board and just drag them right in. Think about how much better this is than downloading all of the images and collecting them in a folder to do who knows what with. And this way, when you're sketching and illustrating, you can see all your references easily in one place. Lastly, for our mood board, I decided to go with some old school muscle for the car and this Ford Mustang 1969. And I made sure to get a few angles because we're going to be hitting this from the front and the back. <laughs> and now we're moving on to the pre-production stages. I highly recommend you spend a significant amount of time in this stage getting everything right. This not only makes the product better, but communicating with your client during these stages allows you to deal with problems earlier so that they don't lead to headaches later. Think about it this way. It's a lot easier to make changes to a sketch than it is to a fully animated scene or even an illustration. I'll explain how to communicate with clients at each stage as we go. So let's get into storyboarding. The first thing you're going to send your client is a rough storyboard. So get out your pencil and paper or your drawing tablet tablet and hammer this out. And how you approach this process will depend on the type of animation you're making. I ended up using a video timeline in Photoshop for this because it was a lyric video and I wanted to nail the timing with an animatic in these early stages, but I'll talk more about that just now. And I just want to make it clear that during the storyboarding phase, you should be looking at any additional references you need to get the job done. References are your friend, always use them. My best tip at this stage is to iterate on your sketches. So create a rough sketch, then create a new layer and drop the opacity of the first layer and draw another version on top, thinking about how you could make it better. This process of iteration always improves the result. It is even more applicable when you're refining sketches and you can apply this process to each stage. So when you're in Adobe Illustrator, you can think about how to improve on the sketch. And when you're in After Effects, you can think about how you can improve the illustration. This mental cue has helped me create better work so many times. If you're working on an explainer video, you'll likely have a script and you'd want to provide animation descriptions for your client. So you could simply add these in the captions or you could start with Melanote's motion design storyboarding template and replace the content. Super useful. And before moving on, you'd want to get this rough storyboard approved by your client. It's important when sending rough storyboards that they still look neat and professional. That's another reason why Melanote is good for this because it sets you apart by providing a clean and professional storyboard and you do not need to mess around with PDFs or any other storyboarding software. And you can share this really easily with your client by going over to share on the board and creating a review link 
to send their way. And if you created an animatic, you could even include it in your board like I did here. Sign up for a free Millinode account using the link in the description. Quick note on animatics. These are not strictly necessary, but they are very helpful if you already have a voiceover or music and getting the timing right is important. The animatic allows you to refine the timing at this early stage and determine the pace and if there's too much or too little happening. Once again, it is much easier to change the timing for an animatic than it is when you've already animated the scene in After Effects. You may already have experienced how difficult and frustrating timing related changes can be. So nailing the timing here can save you some major headaches later. Now, after receiving feedback from your client, you can iterate on your storyboard based on their feedback. If you're dealing with a client who is not familiar with the motion design process, as the expert, you're there to guide them through the process. So encourage them to provide as much feedback as possible during this stage. Now, once you've got an approved rough storyboard, it can also be a good idea for the next step to refine that storyboard. This can be helpful to send to your client, but it is especially helpful for the betterment of the animation. I highly recommend spending the time refining your initial rough sketches. This allows you to make even more detailed decisions and resolve each scene before getting to illustration. Once again, it is a lot faster to change a sketch than it is to tweak Bezier handles when you're rendering your sketches as illustrations. So the more refined your storyboard, the easier it is to illustrate. Now let's talk about style frames, another important part of the motion design process. This is where you get to explore some visuals and figure out what the animation is going to look like. So you would choose a frame or more than one if you like, and then test out one or more styles to send to your client. This is also a good time to talk about color as this can be tricky no matter how much experience you have. Sometimes a client will give you colors to work with, but if you don't receive any, you may want to include some color variations for your style frames. And if you do not even know where to begin with your color palette, a good starting point is to look at your mood board for common colors. Looking at my mood board, I'm seeing a lot of purples, pinks, and blues, and I could use those as a starting point to build from and experiment with. You could also start in grayscale and bring that into Photoshop and mess around with some levels and curves effects, or jump into After Effects and mess around with a tritone or CC toner effect. These are great because you often get some more complex or interesting results or create color variations you may not have come up with on your own. Lastly, my favorite color palette tool is Coolest.co and in their generator, you can just hit spacebar until you find something appealing and rework it for your purposes. This time the client provided a color palette, so I just used that immediately, but I also added some extra colors and in After Effects, I ended up adding this color adjustment layer to get the final values where I wanted them. Now back to the style frames. I already had a vision that I executed by creating this base illustration included here on the right, and then I brought that into After Effects to create the more interesting version on the left. And fun fact, the background blur with chromatic aberration was something inspired by the movie Into the Spider-Verse, where instead of blurring backgrounds to create depth, they used chromatic aberrations instead. And I thought that was cool and worth trying out for myself. Here is another example of a few style frame options from another job so you can get the idea. Once again, these need to be sent to your client and refined based on their feedback. The point here is to get the style approved before you go ahead and start illustrating, or God forbid, animating the rest of the scenes. So once again, you can use Miller Note to send your style frames to your client with the review link where they can make comments right on your board. I hope you're starting to see how useful Miller Note can be as a tool for creating animation, organizing your projects and working with clients. I genuinely use it for all of my projects, even my personal animations, as it's just such a great tool for gathering inspiration or references and collecting them in one place. Miller Note is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start your next creative project. So once the style is approved, the next step is to go back to your storyboard and apply the style to every scene. And if you had already refined your storyboard, this should go a lot quicker than before because you don't need to make as many new creative decisions. You are now more like a factory worker grinding away laboriously with repetition after repetition with each new scene slowly sapping your creative energy while you silently yearn to jump forward in time to the next step animation. This is the culmination of all your hard work in the pre-production stage. Your effort should be rewarded and things should run smoothly. The only thing that can break your stride at this point is a difficult client who loves to nitpick, aka all of them. Got it. <laughs>
In my case, I used the animatic in my timeline to make sure I maintained the timing I worked out with the client and then cracked on with each scene. Once you've created a first draft, you need to get client feedback again. And my favorite tool for this is Frame.io, simply because it allows clients to make timestamp comments and point to things with drawings if need be. This really makes feedback easier on both sides. So use it, you won't regret it. And at this point, you've completed the process in the smoothest way possible. You've sent your final invoice and can marvel at the awesome animation you made. And now that you understand this process, you can use it to repeatedly and consistently create quality results. You're welcome. Hit subscribe for more Motion XP.